Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name's Katie and today we're doing a very special video <laughs> um, to celebrate reaching 500 subscribers. So thank you so so much everyone. I'm super excited and I love every single one of you and I wish I could just give you all a hug. <laughs> um, yeah when I was, I'd never thought like this many people would want to hear me talking <laughs> about books and yeah I'm just so happy and whenever anyone like comments or like chats to me on Twitter it just makes me so happy <laughs> and yeah because I've always been quite like socially like shy so just having like well I know internet validation isn't very a very good thing but <laughs> just <laughs> having a little bit just makes me kind of a bit emotional so yeah thank you all so much so I wanted to do something special for reaching 500 subscribers and this idea was suggested to me <laughs> by the lovely Tammy from Tammy Tries to Read so I'll link her channel like up above somewhere um, and you should all check her channel out because she's amazing but and that is I'm going to be reacting to one star reviews of The Way of Kings <laughs> so I don't know why I thought this was a good idea <laughs> um, but I'm going to do it for your entertainment. So I have some Goodread reviews open on my laptop. So I just opened a few that I thought looked quite good. I haven't read them properly or anything. So I'm going to insert little screenshots. <laughs> and I'm going to look down on my laptop because I, I'm not. I don't have the ability to memorise things <laughs> just by looking at them. Which I wish I did. That would make life so much easier. But anyway... Um, so the first one, I'm just, I'm just gonna highlight little sections. So the first one, I'm para I'm gonna paraphrase while I talk about it. So it says, if you have to read The Way of Kings, which you shouldn't do, but if you have to because your dad gave it to you, then I recommend you do so while a little bit drunk. <laughs> so well, honestly, even if you like it, you could still do it while a little bit drunk. I feel like that would make any reading experience better. It makes the book a lot more fun. For example, when passages like this occur, she stared eastward, her expression horrified, eyes wide and sorrowful. It was the face of a child watching a brutal murder that stole her innocence. Ooh, <laughs> I think we all know who that's about. But yeah, and then, well, I'd rather, much rather read that sort of thing while slightly drunk. <laughs> that, that's quite funny, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and then the next bit is, now I know it looks like I'm pushing you towards cirrhosis given the length of the book and the fact that howlers of this kind <laughs> pop up frequently. <laughs> I thought this would be bad, but this is actually kind of funny. <laughs> but hey, I'm not suggesting constructing a drinking game. <laughs> so someone needs to invent that, like a drinking game for the Way of Kings. <laughs> okay, then a bit further down, there's a bit which is like... um. It's like everyone's bouncing around till they reach the next level. I'm just saying when you find yourself writing about anticipation, <laughs> I can't even speak. <laughs> when you find yourself writing about anticipation spread, <laughs> that is a red flag. <laughs> There's a lot of hate for spread in these comments, actually, I think. It's quite funny. I do, I love this, I do love the spread, but they do get a little bit ridiculous sometimes. Like, I like the spread which are like bonded to the Knight's Radiance, so like Sill and Pattern and yeah, Windle and all them. But they're, they're random spread that just like float around in the air. I don't really see the point in them. Well, I do, but they are a bit debatable. <laughs> they're like inebriation spread as well. They're a bit ridiculous. Um, okay, and then, then a bit further down, this is all the same review, by the way. Uh, the other big problem, as you might have guessed, is that Sanderson, Sanderson thinks his readers are very stupid. <laughs> For example, if something important has just happened, most of the book has been devoted to its occurrence. I don't need <laughs> this. Is, I can't even... uh, something just changed, Moash whispered, hand up. <laughs> so, something important. <laughs> like, I, I didn't notice any of these things while reading the book, but just take it out of context. They're <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, oh, Moash, <laughs> what have you done? Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one now. <laughs> so the this it says, so I was really surprised when this turned into everything I hate about fantasy novels. And number one, full on hoodoo. <laughs> yeah, but when your first introduction to The Weird capitalised, it, it doesn't compel me to read further. <laughs> Uh, they are ganky names, fierce friend, void bringers. This is bad at the lesson writing. Um, 
I don't know, I feel like Voidbringer is quite cool. I like the, the meme that's like, um, an alternative name for the perpendicularity should be called a Hoidbringer. <laughs> that's quite funny. Hey, yeah, then more hate for the spren. So every emotion seems to have a corresponding fairy type creature associated with it called X spren, i.e. fear spren. In the opening pages, one of these is described as globs of purple goo. <laughs> um, really clunky, weak, and inartful. <laughs> quite funny. Um, okay, so this next one's quite concise. So it says, although many readers love and admire Brandon Sanderson's works, I have to say that after The Way of Kings, I'm not one of those people. It's hard for me to put my finger on what I don't exactly enjoy, but I find his writing boring and difficult to connect to overall. Okay, that's valid. I can see that. Well, yeah, I, I do feel like his writing's quite easy to get into. So I, I'm sure he gets less of this, like maybe criticism than other authors. But yeah, if a book's not for you, then it's not for you. So good on you, Terence, <laughs> for knowing what you like. Um, so the next one, uh, The Way of Kings is tedium defined. I will admit that the first section of the book is a little slow, but I really, I didn't find it hard like to get through or anything. It's, it's a slow, but I think if you're, if you like the book, then it's an enjoyable kind of slow. But I guess if you're not enjoying it, then it might be a bit tedious. <laughs> um, uh, there are four main characters in this novel of a thousand plus pages, one of whom has a myriad of lengthy, unnecessary flashbacks. No, I love Caledon. Um, <laughs> the world is at war with a nebulous enemy. Lots of weird, generic sounding prophecy is banded about. And everyone is a Mary Sue. Hmm. <laughs> Every, uh, this I think this is why I did this one. Every single character is impossibly daft and literal, and this is a major nudge. So if you know me at all, you know I do love a good dumbass character. So <laughs> that's kind of a selling point for me, really. Um, yeah, some of the characters do behave a bit stupidly. Well, yeah, <laughs> and Shalan does have some ra rather terrible <laughs> um, humor, but yeah. <laughs> and then nothing funny happens ever what no one has wit even a character named wit who the narrator tells us <laughs> incessantly is witty <laughs> <laughs> everyone has the same emotional sophistication that of an obnoxious sixth grader um, <laughs> When a middle-aged couple finally realised their mutual love after many years and began courting, I shuddered at the terror and creepiness. <laughs> That's quite funny. <laughs> yeah, Dalinar and Navadi do have a very tame um, courtship, but yeah, we need those X-rated scenes, Sanderson. <laughs> talking about creatures, and then it says Chaz and Fiend. I kid you not. Okay, Chaz and Fiend is kind of a a, a cheesy name <laughs> but yeah anyway <laughs> and then it's talking about cliches so downtrodden ripped warrior slave is slow to accept his ob ob obvious superpowers no main character is there ever any <laughs> real danger everyone is hot and brilliant <laughs> my um, horny twitter account would agree with that <laughs> Um, yeah, if you don't know or don't follow me on Twitter, I highly recommend you do. Well, maybe don't, but you can watch my slow descent into madness over this <laughs> quarantine period. And I have my own, like, general one, which is at Brightness Katie. And then I also have my horny Cosmere bot, <laughs> which um, is just posting mostly, like, Cosmere trashy content. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you can follow me there if you want to or not <laughs> but yeah the uh, anyway back to the review <laughs> the nefarious enemy race turns out to have a hive mind i actually quite like it when villains have hive minds like that kind of thing i don't know i find it quite interesting like in um i just leviathan wakes as well the proto molecule that's a bit of a hive mind but i do quite like that one but anyway um kaladin i think is a ripped warrior slave so yeah that's a that's a plus in my book <laughs> Okay, so this next one is clearly in the minority of readers. I found this NY, Time, NY Times bestseller epic fantasy. Has, had to specify it was a bestseller. 
um, to be verbose, I don't even know what that word means, <laughs> that's terrible, her bloated, complex and disjointed mess with the characters going in circles, battle after battle, flash back after flash forward and constantly changing voices. So there are rather a lot of POVs in the Way of Kings, I will give her that. <laughs> there's like about 80 or something. Well, I don't think there's 80 in the Way of Kings, but I think in total in the series there is that many. I, I don't know if I saw that somewhere. Um, I don't feel like there's battle after battle though. It kind of, I guess with the Parshendi, they keep clashing, but there's only like one real big battle in the Way of Kings that kind of builds up to. There are there are flashbacks, but I actually think the flashbacks are done really well, and I think they add to Kaladin's story a lot. Um, it doesn't even begin to come together until about page six hundred, and even then, it doesn't really ramp up for another two hundred and fifty pages, with the final result being a giant prologue to his newest fantasy series. Uh, I do agree that it's slightly a bit like prologue-y, but I I don't think it's prologue exactly, but just it is. You can definitely tell it's like setting up more for future books to come but I think that just comes with the territory of having like a 10 book series or whatever so yeah <laughs> and the next one Ugh, I wanted to like this book but ridiculous spren kept sprouting up on some of the pages that's <laughs> more spren hate hashtag spren rights um the author uses an explicit form of exposition that feels like spoon feeding, that feels less like spoon feeding and more like force feeding. I do think there are there is exposition, but I don't I don't mind that. I quite like info dumps and stuff. I don't know. I guess that's like the scientist in me. <laughs> um just like give me all the information. Yeah, other things I don't like. Spren. I just like the idea in general. They only seem to appear when narratively convenient. And the types of them are weird, feel odd, and don't allow anyone to keep a secret from anyone else. Or else Misty Grey's secret spread might start appearing. <laughs> Followed by retreating red embarrassment spread. <laughs> oh, that is a bit it's harsh but true. Um, Kaladin seems way too mature for his age. He reads and behaves like a 40 year old and still sporadically his youth is mentioned. I do think Kaladin has the mind of a grumpy 40 year old. <laughs> yeah, Kaladin's really like Vasher in a trench coat, but yeah. Okay, then the next one is I've never wanted to bill an author for my time before, but I'm finally cutting my losses on putting the way of kings down. I wanted to read something big and epic, a sprawling series about a far off world I could barely divine. Instead, I got three storylines about moody brooders trapped by circumstance. <laughs> That's so funny. Kaladin is definitely like the broody, grumpy sort. But I don't think Shalan is really, or Dalinar. I guess Dalinar when he was young, but oh, there's a helicopter. You can hear that noise. <laughs> Unfortunately, they mostly look at your hand, their hands and wonder if they should do something. Aww. I think I think that's one of the reasons actually that Kaladin's depression is so well portrayed because there is a bit of kind of doom and gloom and like him, him not doing anything and I think that that kind of is an accurate portrayal of depression rather than like um bad writing I guess but if you don't I guess if you don't like that then you might not like it but Dalinar goes into battle with his totally bitch and gem sword and spends a dozen pages methodically mowing through soldiers. By the time this chapter was over, I was completely on board with Dalinar. War is wearying and winning all the time is boring as heck. <laughs> <laughs> and then but wait sanderson released a sample sentence from the upcoming book three perhaps a taste of what's to come would whet my appetite and then the the sentence is rock buds crunch like skulls beneath dalinar's boots as he charged across the burning field and then i'm sold if anyone needs me i'll be wading through 1300 plus pages currently published in the series to see dalinar run across the same barren wasteland he was in chapter one of book one <laughs> There is quite a bit of like war and stuff, but they there are in different settings, like in the different books, I guess, kind of. <laughs> that that one may be a bit true. Um, <laughs> this next review is very simple. <laughs> and it's just shit. <laughs> oh, well, if that's what you want to believe, then good for you, mate. But <laughs> yeah. Um. So then the next one, another short one, is confusing, depressing, and repetitive DNF. So I actually don't, I mean, Kaladin does have depression and 
you do feel kind of bad for him. But I don't think it's that depressing on the whole as a book. I think Sanderson books are actually quite like, not light, but they're more on the kind of epic, like, scale of fantasy books rather than grim dark, I would say. Um, yeah, I don't think it's confusing. Not really. Maybe if you're silly. Well, the magic system is maybe a little bit confusing. Well, I don't think, I think in Way of Kings, I always forget like what's in which book, but I think you don't start understanding the magic system properly until Words of Radiance, maybe. I don't know. Um, <coughs> the next one, boring. <laughs> um, well, if that's what you want to believe then. You can believe that, hon. Okay, the end from the next one. <laughs> I look forward not to reading about plants with a rock-like carapace ever again. <laughs> That's kind of true. Well, the the light plants and stuff in this world all kind of close up, which I guess you don't really see the relevance of until book three. But yeah, it is a little bit silly, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Yeesh, I do not like this book. The second time I've tried to read this and I'm just over it. My first issue is that it wastes no time with the cruelty and death. By the first chapter, after the prologue, the character kills like a dozen or so men on his way to assassinate the king. Aw, oh, Seth. <laughs> um, even, a, even Game of Thrones held back in the first few chapters. So I do think, because the book opens with the assassination of the king, basically, then that is a bit of a, a, bit of a depressing note to start on, but, you know... And then the next chapter is a battle, which is another cliche. The world is miserable and awful sequence of events. And then the next chapter and a character from the previous chapter is a slave and all that cruelty. And I'm just not interested in that. Three chapters of misery, people. Like I'm not a wuss, but pleasant less. But I'd like pleasantry, please. Uh, that's a tongue twister. Um, yeah, that's so funny. I don't really think about that a lot because I, like I said before, I think the general tone of the book is not super like doom and gloomy. But I guess the start is a little bit because <laughs> you have kind of, yeah, well, Seth. But yeah, I do love Seth's kind of angst, though. I think that's quite funny. <laughs> um, then there are place names like the Shattered Plains and the Unclaimed Hills. I don't even remember the Unclaimed Hills. Like, I'm sorry, but those just sound ridiculous. Like, if you're going to do descriptive names, could you, like, have more descriptive ones? I don't know, what's more descriptive than the Shattered Plains? They're literally plains that have been shattered. Um, like, the hell kind of places the Shattered Plains. Like, is the ground shattered? The sky? What? <laughs> <laughs> I went into reading this book with high expectations. There was so much positive hype and the fantastic world building and hard magic system. By the time I finished, I felt like I'd been mugged. Oh dear. <laughs> In short, this felt more like more this felt like little more than the original's author's attempt at fanfic for their own story. Oh. <laughs> And then this one's talking about they're reading the audiobook and I didn't have to actively read, I could passively listen. But then it was like death by a thousand cuts. <laughs> That's <was> harsh. <laughs> um, I was trying to convince myself that was due to consuming a book in audio format, which I don't usually do. Some names were confusing because it was high fantasy. I didn't have a good lay of the land, it's just another world, etc, etc. But then stuff stuck. Stuff started getting on my nerves that I just couldn't blame on the format, such as I was introduced to a character I liked, Shalan, but after her POV, but after having her POV steadily every other chapter, she abruptly vanished. <laughs> Are we getting back to her ever? Don't know. It's been a while. Um, yeah. So the book is split into five parts, and. In part one, I think, from what I remember, is Caledon and Shalon, and then part two is Caledon, Adeline, and Dalinar, and then part three is maybe what is it? I can't remember, but I don't think you get. Sh and then no, I think part three you get Shalon again because that's when all the jam stuff goes down. So yeah, you do get her back. And <laughs> one of the other main POV characters I hate, just despise Caledon. I've never seen anyone who hated Caledon before. Aww. Catherine, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. Um, he's an unintelligent, selfish jerk. Who is probably crazy. 
what is up with the ghost girl he keeps talking to and no one else bothers to comment on even though they can't see her <laughs> that's coming from my baby <laughs> this one's the harshest one um i started skipping his chapters how can you not like Caledon, honestly <laughs> The women cover their left hand. Again, why is the left hand so much more risque than the right? I know there is a religion, but not much about its tenants. Um, the weather is wacky. What's a high storm? Why did the seasons fluctuate so much? Yeah, I never felt like we got an explanation for that, actually. The seasons were meant to take, like, four weeks or something, but I, I don't really know why that is true. Yeah, so that is the last one I have. <laughs> so this video is very entertaining, actually. It was quite fun, quite funny. Um, I don't feel too attacked. Although that last one, <laughs> the Caledon hate. Oh, my poor heart. But yeah, so I hope you all had fun watching this. I definitely had fun making it. And um, thank you again for 500 subscribers. I'm so excited. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you next time.